So this session is a special treat because the contents of this book changed the world in all kinds of ways. And yet almost nobody knows what this book is about. In 1538, the English passed a law that you needed to have a death certificate to be buried. They were thinking people were cheating on their taxes. So you had to have one. And of course, the printing press had been invented in 1455. So it came up as an idea around 1600 that we ought to take these death certificates and we ought to just compile them to see generally so we can give the king what had happened last week and who died. And so they created a one-page weekly report. This is for the year 1664 of who died and what from, because you had to list on your death certificate what you died from. This is Richard's favorite because he talks about dying of teeth here. 27 people died of teeth this week. <laughs> and in each week, this was called a bill of mortality. And you are looking at the world's first health data. There was never health data before this book. And not only did they show it by subject, how many people died of arguing? One. <laughs> Richard, you died. Okay. <laughs> Childbed, seven. Cough, four. In fact, this week uh, in London, um, there were 394 people who died. And then they did it by parish, and they showed you how many were born. And so you could see literally by parish in London, the city of London, how many were born which allowed you to summarize births and deaths for the week. Now, it turns out the year 1664 is a big deal. It's the year of the plague. Not a good thing in London. And so each week, we can see what happens because we have a compiled set of the bills of mortality. Plague zero. I'm going to skip ahead a couple of weeks. Plague zero. I'm going to skip ahead a couple of weeks. We're in April. It's getting warm. Plague zero. We're going to skip ahead a few more weeks, not too many weeks here. And suddenly the plague appears in the end of May, 17 dead of the plague. Okay? And then we can go to the following week and it's 43 dead of the plague. And we can go to the following week and it's 112 dead of the plague. And we can skip ahead and it's 470 dead that week. And then it's 725 dead. Then it's 1,843 dead in a week in London. This is a city of only 500,000 people before the plague strikes. And then the plague keeps building. Now we're in August, 4,237 dead that week until it peaks. I'm going to skip ahead here for time. 7,165 people die in a week in the plague. And we can tell you exactly what parishes they died in. And we can see exactly what happens. And here's what happens. The plague then starts to peter out. 5,223 die. A strange phenomenon. The good Lord seems to be following something. 4,929, 4,300. We skip. 1,400, 1,050. 243, and so for the first time in human history, a pattern appears in the data. The good Lord isn't plucking people at random. He's plucking them out on a plague curve. Right? From this, they compile the first true health data set. And it occurs to them that you can predict the plague. And so a man named John Grant does the analysis and says, Here's how many christenings there were, 9,967. Here's how many people died, 97,000 burials, of which 68,000 were of the plague. But what happens here is for the first time it becomes clear that public health can be charted, can be mathematical, can be predicted. And from this book comes the idea that public health can be quantified. From this book comes the idea that patterns in the data matter more than patterns in the hand or patterns on the head or patterns in the sky. From this book, from these bills of mortality comes the probability industry, comes statistics, comes insurance, all from this one data set. This is the world's first pattern of data, and it changes human imagination forever. Thank you.